Hello, good morning, Glorious Generations family. Welcome once again. So today I would like you to join me in the book of Colossians. We are going into chapter 4. Are uh, we ready? So, um, do not forget, every time we read together, we have to share our thoughts. When I read the Bible, I always look for some keywords, like a certain verse could minister so much to you. So in case you find out something more interesting, it might be different from what I know or what I thought, please share with me in the comment section. Okay, thank you. So let's read. Masters. Provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. That's a great lesson already. Further instructions, that's in verse 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Outsiders. Let your... Okay, hold on. Let me, let me repeat that. Because the verse of the day is in verse 6. This is verse 5. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Does that, does that sound like something you love? Like you're meeting a strangers and you're behaving somehow to the strangers. You don't even know who they are. Or you're meeting them for the first time and you judge them. You don't know them. You don't know their stories. So, I think this is one thing that is striking me right here. Be, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. So, that to me is more like, you know, they may beg for something. They may be stranded for something. They may, anything, even if you can't give. How about your word of encouragement? How about your time? How about your services? How about your, even your smile? Hi, hello. That's me. I love to greet people. For instance, in my church, if I find a new face, I walk up to them and I throw a beautiful greeting with my beautiful smile because your smile could actually heal a broken heart. Head. We all smile, but sometimes, there is a thick bitterness behind someone's smile. And you may never know it. That is why it is not good to give some negative attitude to people. Because you don't know what they are going through. They may just be crying bitterly just a few minutes or seconds before they met you. And then you throw in a bad attitude at them. Mm -mm. That's not going to help. So... This is a good lesson, right? So let's move on to today's verse. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Hmm. Which means, mind what you say. Let your conversation be always full of grace, which means whatever you're saying to anyone, Make it worthwhile. Be careful what you say. There is power in our words. And what once out, once you let it out, is more like egg. Once an egg, an egg, rather, once an egg drops on the floor or on the ground, guess what happens, especially in the sand? You can get them back. They, they mix up to the floor, to the ground. Even if you pack them back, you can't get the correct thing anymore. So it's, it's gone. 
the originality is gone you can't mold it back you can't put it back in the shell the same thing goes into our words when you let it out you can't get it back it's gone and the only thing is trying to fix it like pegging you know apologizing but i think it's best that we keep it good so this is ministering to me also sometimes i can be very hungry and say some things so i think this is this should minister to us too so let's move on final greetings i mean verse seven tychicos tricky name tychicos we tell you all the news about me he is a dear brother a faithful minister and a fellow servant in the lord i am sending him to you for the es for the express purpose that you may know about about our circumstances and that he may encourage your heart he is coming with onesimus onesimus sorry he is coming with onesimus your faithful and dear brother who is one of you they will tell you everything that is happening here my fellow prisoner Aristarchus sends you his greetings. He has thus Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is called Justus, also sends greetings. These are the only Jews among my co-workers for the, for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, okay? You know some Bible names can be tongue-biting. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you. Another lesson, pray for others. Someone told me yesterday that her son wasn't feeling too good and I'm a mother. I know what that means, right? I don't want my children not to feel good. So if someone says a child doesn't feel good, I say, mom, you know what to do. Pray for that child. Pray for that child. Pray for that child. Throughout that day, each time your minds go there, pray for that child. Your friends not feeling good, pray for them. Anyone in trouble that you know, pray for them. That's why I love it in my in my church. We pray for the prisoners. We pray for those who are in trouble. We pray for those who are lacking. We pray for those who, you know, who are sad. We pray for everyone. So it's good to intercede for ourselves in prayers. You don't have to necessarily kneel down or fast to pray. Pray anyway. When I'm in the bathroom doing number two. Do you know what number two? Number two means pooping. Even when I'm doing number two, I pray. When I'm doing number one, peeing, I pray. Anything drops in my heart, I pray. I pray anyway. I pray anyway. When I'm driving, I pray. In my heart, sometimes I don't talk. I pray like Anna. I whisper. I pray in my heart. So let me round up. There's some distractions building up right, <laughs> right here. So um, he's always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God mature and fully assured i vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those in La laodicea and high half aeropolis <laughs> our dear friend luke i mean I'm, I'm in verse 14 our dear friend luke the doctor and demas send greetings Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters of Laodicea and to the and to the okay and to Nepha and the church in her house. After this letter has been read to you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you in turn read the letter from Laodiceans from Laodicea. Tell Archippus. See to it that you complete the mystery you have received in the Lord. Hi, Peter, 
write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. You know one thing I love about Peter, about um, about Paul, Apostle Paul. He always he will tell you if whatever he's saying is from him or his spirit, or is actually directly from God. Thank you for joining me in this reading. I got a lot of lessons. And it's good for you to have your highlighter. I don't have mine right now. My children misplaced it. So sometimes when you read a full chapter, you highlight, highlight those parts. Because I've heard a lot of people say, Bible is boring. Yes, Bible can be so boring. Part of where you see John begat, J.C. Uh, begat. Yes, Bible can be so boring. So, but what I look out for when I read a full chapter is to highlight those parts that seems to be ministering to me most. So, and I would like you to do that as well. Thank you for joining me. Is there anything that strikes your mind, apart from the verse of the day, that asks you to season your words with salt? You know what salt means, which means if you put too much salt, it will mess your food up. If you put um, less salt, your food will be tasteless. But if you put an accurate salt, of course, you're going to get the good meal. So which the same thing happens to our conversations. If you're saying anything, make sure it carries the grace of God. And there's something I always look out for. As Christians, there's something that always ring bell in my ears. Whatever we do, we have to do it to the glory of God. Like I always tell my children, when I say anything, when I talk to people, there is no how I'm going to engage in conversation with you. And you will not find out that I'm a Christian. You have to find out. Because I'm not going to say anything. We get we we engage in conversation and I'm not gonna mention things that will prove that I'm a Christian. I will definitely do it because I am used to it, because I have been a Christian since day one, since my childhood, and I've always known what I should, you know. So I think it's just normal, it's natural. Don't let me go too deep. Mind your circles, mind your music, mind a lot because they all going to reflect in you. So, thank you. Join me again tomorrow. Love you all.